What's up guys, welcome back to another Surgical Tech Tips. Today, as you can see, I have an instrument tray right here and we are gonna be breaking it down. I know a lot of you out there have been wanting me to do a breakdown video with some instrument trays and I think it's a great idea and I talked to my people here and I got the okay that I'm allowed to open up a tray and, and talk about it. So, we're starting with the most I think the simplest tray that we have in ROR, and that is the general minor tray. This is a tray that you're gonna open up for any type of minor general procedure. Pretty much all of your uh, hernias, umbilical, inguinals, stuff like that. Um, small breast cases, like lumps and small masses. Basically, like INDs of knees, groins, anything really. There's, there's a lot of op applications for this minor tray to be used that you don't necessarily need, you know, some of the bigger trays with much more instruments and bigger retractors and stuff like that. So, let's go through it. All right, now we're gonna start this tray off by just going through the general instrument stringer that we have here on the, uh, on the roll towel. So starting it off, we've got uh, four sharp towel clips, also known as the backhouse towel clips. As you can see, very sharp. These can pierce patient's skin, and a lot of the times surgeons do use it for that application. Um, other times you may see surgeons as they uh, do like a four towel off around the uh, incision site. A lot of the times they'll like to use this backhouse towel clip and, and clip the corners of the towels together so the towels don't move around while they're working on the, uh, on the field. Other times you may see them use like a disposable stapler for that or just nothing at all. Next we have the dull towel clip also known as the Lorna towel clamp. Um, I personally like to use these for like uh, the bovi holders and stuff like that on the field. Um, if you use these sharp towel clips, you're going to be piercing through the drapes themselves, and that is piercing through a you know a somewhat sterile field. So it's not a good idea to use these uh, these sharp towel clips for that reason. Uh, I would definitely I definitely prefer using the the dull towel clips. And if I don't have these available, I'll just use like a Kelly clamp or something like that to hold the bovi holder on. Moving along, we've got some mosquitoes here. Uh, these are the Halstead Mosquito, the proper name for them. Uh, some other names for this uh, Halstead Mosquito might be uh, just just Mosquito. You know, sometimes they'll just call it just a Mosquito. Uh, other times, just a small clamp. Uh, they may use it to clamp off a vascular structure so they could tie around it. Or other times, it may be used to maybe dissect. Instead of using a scissor, they may want to just do blunt dissection and they'll be able to uh, dissect with a mosquito instead. So the slightly bigger brother to the mosquito is the Kelly clamp. Uh, the Kelly clamp is, ah, it's not much bigger, maybe like a half of an inch bigger than the, uh, than the mosquito. This is kind of like your general purpose clamp. Uh, I see this clamp used in the OR more than anything else. Uh, if the surgeon asks for a clamp, they're usually wanting this clamp right here. Uh, your general purpose clamp. Again, used for similar things like the, uh, like the mosquito, yeah, blunt dissection, stuff like that. Next up, we have the, uh, the Alice forcep or the Alice clamp. Um, there is an Alice Adair clamp as well. The Adair clamp is just slightly wider. The teeth are slightly wider. So instead of maybe like four and five teeth, it's like seven and eight teeth or something like that. It's just a little bit wider. Usually you'll see those in a GYN set. Uh, these are a general purpose clamp for basically holding on to, to like masses and tissue that you're trying to excise from a, from a wound or from a patient. Uh, it could be like a breast lumpectomy, it could be a, a lipoma, uh, but the most important role of this is that it's atraumatic. It's, it's not going to um, just tear into that tissue uh, like some other clamps 
used uh, can do. Next up, we've got the Babcock. The Babcock is, nothing really looks like it. Uh, and I have, looks like a, a six inch and an eight inch Babcock here in this set. Um, this is a clamp that is used pretty much solely on, on bowel. It's, it's an atraumatic clamp. It's, it's not going to you know, harm the tissue that it's clamping on, similar to the Alice, but this is just a, a little bit lighter on the tissue. So you'll see this used on, uh, on bowel. Now we have something traumatic here. This is the, uh, the Leahy clamp, or the Leahy goiter clamp, I believe they call the, the real name of it. Uh, this clamp is, obviously you can see it has teeth. It's very sharp. Similar use to, you know, Babcock and Alice, where it's going to be grabbing tissue and holding on to it. Um, the only reason they would use this, uh, they will not use this on bowel like a Babcock would, would be used on, but maybe in the surgeries where an Alice is used and the Alice just keeps on kind of slipping off of the tissue and it's not like grasping on there properly, they might just ask for a Leahy so they could really grab onto that tissue and and tug on it so they can, you know, get their full dissection in that they, uh, that they want to achieve. Next up we have the coker here, or the Rochester Oshner coker. As you can see, the inside of the clamp is similar to like a Kelly, uh, where it just has these serrations on the inside of the clamp, but it has these teeth, you know, two little teeth here at the end, these spikes. And this is really used to grasp onto tough, tough tissue and basically just just really really pull pull up on that tissue uh, to get it out of the way get a better view for the surgeon that type of stuff uh, again we have a six and an eight inch here and a lot of these instruments come in all different lengths as well next up we have the peon uh, sometimes called the the mayo clamp or just a big clamp for some surgeons uh, this has similar uses to the, the Kelly and the Mosquito, but again, it, it just depends on where the surgeon is working and, and you know, what they're going to need, so. Next up is the tonsil, also called the schnitt. Yes, it's not a bad word, it's the schnitt. Uh, this tonsil clamp, used for dissection quite often actually, and uh, this length of the tonsil, this, uh, I believe it's an eight inch length of the tonsil is the most common length that you will see for this tonsil. Um, a lot of the times if the surgeon wants like uh, a tie on a pass, you will put the tie on a tonsil clamp for them to use for the tie on the pass. Uh, other times they may ask for maybe a peanut and this tonsil sponge will be used to hold that peanut. This is a, uh, this is a good general use item for, um, for those types of things. Next up is the right angle clamp. Uh, surgeons will just call it a right angle. It has many different names. Sometimes it can just be uh, you know, a delicate right angle. Sometimes it'll be called like a thoracic gall duct forceps, stuff like that. Uh, basically those just have different types of serrations in them but they all have the right angle uh, physical property to it. Uh, in a vascular, in a vascular uh, tray these, these are used a lot for vascular but in the instance of the general minor general tray it could be used for dissection and maybe if the surgeon is coming into a big uh, vein that's kind of in their way and maybe it's something that they don't want to clip they might uh, go ahead and use this right angle to get around the vein, dissect around the vein a little bit, and put a couple ties around the vein and tie that vein off and get it out of the way. Next up is the sponge forcep. Uh, also known as a sponge stick, but don't get it confused with a sponge stick. Uh, if the surgeon asks you for a sponge stick, they mean they, they want this sponge forcep with a Raytec wrapped around the end of it. That is a sponge stick. If, if they ask for a sponge forcep, this is what they're asking for, just this. No sponge on it, this is a sponge forcep. Coming near the end of this uh, stringer here, 
we have two, four, six needle holders uh, for this tray. We've got these small little Hazley needle holders. Uh, there's no inserts in them or anything. These are perfectly smooth. These will be used for a smaller type of needle um, and it's definitely a smaller, more delicate type of, uh, type of case. Uh, moving up, we have the Mayo Hagar and these have nice little inserts that are nice and grippy for big needles and it comes in two sizes. We've got the uh, 6 inch and the 8 inch size Mayo Hagar needle holders. You'll use these for closing, uh, closing suture a lot of the times. Now that we're at the end of the stringer here, we have uh, two, four, six scissors that we have to go through. This is the, uh, the pot smith scissor. This scissor obviously is used for dissection and, and all that stuff. All these scissors are used for dissection. And um, this is used in vascular a lot. I don't see it used in, in general surgery a lot. There may be some general surgeons that like to use it, but you will know it's a, it's a, uh, a pot smith because it has these bevels on either side of, of each side of each side of the scissor itself and it'll have you know this this nice little line going to the tip of the uh, of the scissor that's a pot smith now we have the metzenbaum scissor this is a scissor that a general surgeon will use quite often uh, it's got a nice blunt tip to it and they'll use this for dissection all the time this will be your tissue your main tissue dissection scissor for general surgery. And now we have uh, two mayo scissors here. We've got a straight mayo and a curved mayo scissor. Uh, these scissors in general surgery will be used to cut suture across the bar. This is your suture cutter. This, this scissor here will be used to cut suture. If you give the, uh, the surgeon the Mets scissors to cut suture, he's probably gonna say, please give me the suture scissors. So if they're asking for a suture scissor, it'll most likely be this Mayo scissor. Not all surgeons are the same, but 99% of the surgeons I work with in general use this as a suture scissor. And the last scissor we have here is just a small little Stevens tenotomy scissor. Uh, you can tell it's a tenotomy because it has basically like little cutout on either side of the uh, of the tip of this scissor just to bring it up a little bit closer for finer dissection and more uh, more precise dissection now going over the back of the tray here these are all of our retractors in this uh, in this minor set we've got a couple wheat landers two different sizes depending on the size of the incision we have some uh, send retractors obviously it's got a blunt side and this is the the sharp rake side of the send We've got some Murphy rake retractors. These are four prong Murphy rake retractors. You'll see this a lot in uh, breast surgery. A pin cutter. Also, you will see a lot in breast surgery, like a needle localization, stuff like that. US Army Navies, also known as just the Army Navy retractor. Good general use item. You'll see that used quite often in multitude of uh, general cases. And the last two here are the Richardson retractors. We got a small one and we've got a big one. Uh, you'll know it's a Richardson because it's always gonna kinda come back on itself a little bit at the tip, as both of these do. And those are just, a, again, a good uh, general use retractor for a multitude of things and a multitude of cases uh, across the board as far as uh, minor, minor cases go. All right, the last part of this tray is everything that you usually you'll get kind of in a bag similar, similar to this. Uh, it's basically all of your loose items, which are gonna be your forceps and, uh, and your knife handles like that. All right, so breaking these uh, forceps down, these are very basic, because again, this is a minor general tray. These are the Adsons with teeth up front here, obviously used for skin, so that's why I have them right here and we have the tissue forceps here. Um, these could be used for subcutaneous. They, they're also known as the rat tooth. Uh, a lot of surgeons will just say, hey, you know, give me a rat tooth forcep. This is what they're asking for. And we have a deeper version for them as well. Uh, these are similar in, uh, in, in their physical nature to the rat tooth, but they just, uh, they do not have the, the teeth at the end of the forcep themselves. 
These are used a lot as dressing forceps. And um, you know, if you're packing a wound uh, with, with dressings, you'll see this used a lot. Um, this is a similar use to the rat tooth. This is the Bonnie forcep. Uh, it's just a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger, and it can grab a little bit more tissue. So maybe it's, maybe it's a slightly or a, an obese patient and they have a lot of tissue that they need to grab. They're gonna be using this when they're closing up that subcutaneous tissue. Uh, the DeBakey, this, this forcep here is going to be used all the time. This is the DeBakey vascular forcep. And it's used, I mean, basically as soon as the inc incision is made and they're bovying down to, you know, where they need to fix the problem, they're going to be using this DeBakey, you know, the entire way through. Uh, sometimes surgeons even use this to close the, uh, the subcutaneous layer of tissue. And which leaves our Russian, our Russian forcep at the end. It has this uh, signature round tip and this is this is good at grabbing stuff as well um i've seen patient i've seen uh, i'm sorry not patients i've seen surgeons pack uh, wounds with dressings with the russian but it's also good as a general use item to if they need to scoop out a lot of tissue and and grab a lot of tissue for for specimen or something like that now the last part of this suture bag here is the knife handle uh, we've just got two number three knife handles Again, this is, uh, this is like your main knife handle that you're going to be loading a number 10 blade on for them to use uh, to make the incision. And we just have two of them in this set. And that's about it. That was our general minor tray. Very, very basic tray. Uh, a lot of very, very basic instruments that you should know as a, as a tech student. And if you don't, definitely go over uh, those instruments in that tray because that is that's a lot of general use General use instruments in that tray that you'll be utilizing all the time all the time in the OR um, I felt like it was a little bit boring of a, of a video uh, Not as exciting as the uh, previous videos that I've made, but that's okay uh, a lot of you guys out there wanted a video that was about instruments and about, you know, an instrument tray. So I hope you guys liked it. And uh, as always, thank you, uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye.